Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us as we take a closer look at the state of the province of the Northern Cape. It is, of course, a province that is smallest in terms of population, but largest in land mass. And they're making good use of that mass, uh, the space that they have there. Uh, some projects that we heard about just before the ad break in renewable energy, uh, solar energy. Uh, we also know wind energy. They're making use of it now. And also the Bloodhound, of course, that uh, land speed record that's taking place here. So very exciting developments when it comes to that. But let's take a look at the other side of the coin now. And Premier, uh, thanks again for joining us. What I loved about your speech that I have right here in front of me was that it was very balanced. So when you highlighted the good, you did so very well and so you should, but you didn't shy away from the negative aspects and some of the things that are not going so well in the province. Uh, one of the issues there, the excessive alcohol intake and, of course, the rape that's going on here. Uh, you taught me a little bit of Afrikaans in, in your speech saying, ons rape and ons sape. So people rape in the province. There's also excessive alcohol abuse here. The DORP system where the uh, farmers are remunerating their laborers by giving them alcohol as opposed to money. It's a huge, huge problem. Speak to us about those social ills. With regards to the issue of, of alcohol abuse, maybe I must come to say that this was a historical issue, the issue of the DORP stelsel. It is something that through our interaction with farmers and with farmers' uh, uh, associations, it is being addressed, and there is a vast improvement. So that's why I'm saying that it's actually a historic thing, that people still put that connotation to the Northern Cape as being the, like the safe capital of, of, of South Africa. But it's not necessarily the case. What is bothering us is the alcohol intake by pregnant women that is actually leading to the fetal alcohol syndrome, of which last year we had a study done which we found that actually Kimberley as an urban area is, is almost second in the world where the prevalence of FAS is. So it was, it was like a, a shock for us because we thought that this thing was confined mostly to the R in some of the areas in Uppington uh, because of the fact that this is the wine producing area Uppington now. They are maybe because of other substances that people have been drinking. So that was how we, we actually found, found out that this problem is much broader in the province. But I must say, historically we had that title, but I don't think we, we deserve that title anymore. But, but it's still an issue because children grow up with this problem of, of, of being affected by this fetal alcohol syndrome and it's really making a negative impact on their lives. So that is why we were trying to address that. People are mostly drinking socially, but we have in the past succeeded in having two weekends of sobriety. So that, sh that goes to show that it's not necessarily the problem to the extent that we think, but it is an issue if it has a negative impact on our children, and that is why we are addressing it. I don't know whether you want me to expand on the rape issue I also. would like you to, and, and the, with particular emphasis on the fact that uh, just doing some research for this particular engagement, I came across a press release that was issued last year, uh, the search for a serial rapist, guilty, uh, or not, we haven't tried him yet because he's still at large, but he's linked to 32 cases of rape. He's been at large since 2011 when he was uh, first discovered that it was a serial rapist. There's a reward that's out, the police have issued 70,000 rand for any information that could lead to this man's arrest, and yet he's still roaming the streets. If you have also read uh, that this uh, perpetrator, let me put it like that, is operating between Kimberley up to Uppington. So you can imagine 400 and something kilos in between, and you actually don't know how you are doing it. But the police are ensuring us that they are putting out all stops. Apparently this guy is very decent. So you won't get the impression that this person is, is, is going to do this kind of criminal act. So you can imagine perceptions usually make that we trust people and then necessarily it's to your detriment. So that is the one thing. But with regards to the rape, let me come to the issue of rape. A few years ago, we really experienced that rape is very prevalent in the province. But what was the issue? 
is the, is the issue that many people were not speaking about it. You know, we, didn't, we could not break the silence. But through intensive community programs by the ANC Women's League, by other organizations in society, people begin to speak out. So my experience was that although we have a high prevalence of rape, rape and other crimes, but it should be attributed to the fact that more people or more women in the Northern Cape are, are reporting, reporting. Okay. cases of rape, which is not a negative thing per se, it, although it is now putting us in high stats, but it's actually helping us to address the problem. So that is why I'm saying we have got that uh, uh, stigma that are hanging on us, but we are glad that women know their rights mm -hmm. and they are coming out to report what is happening to them. They are not su just sitting at home. That is why I'm saying we really do have this title, mm -hmm. which we are not carrying with pride. But the one thing that we are proud about is the fact that the women in the Northern Cape know their rights and they are reporting rape. And that is very important. Mm -hmm. Is there a successful or, or, or impressive conviction rate? Especially during certain times of the year, you will find that we have, and one thing that we have with the courts, we are working together, and there is really an expressive conviction rate. And at least, like we have requested people yesterday in our speech also, is that we must work together, we must take hands to address the scourge of crime in the province. And I must say, in many instances, although sometimes what makes you very sad is that people will always come after the fact, all have been knowing all the time, but no one spoke about it. But at least we are getting convictions and we are getting very good convictions and we are getting very good uh, cooperation from the side of the justice cluster and we are happy about that. Let's perhaps now go and take a look at another incident, rape-related initiation. Some say it's racial. The young Camp Dorper situation there where uh, a teenager was sodomized in what appeared to be some sort of initiation ritual uh, at a boarding school. It, it made headlines all over the country. It was heart-wrenching, absolutely despicable. What is the situation regarding that at the moment? The last I heard, there was a court case. Where are we now regarding that? I understand, yes, there is a court case, but there's also internal processes that are going on in the department. We are having our own investigation at the department because this happened at one of the hostels of our schools. But I must say that it's, it's an unfortunate situation that happened because I think as the Northern Cape, we've been able to manage our race, race level relations in the province. And what happened to us, for us, that's how I term it, was very barbaric and it was a criminal element. If you watch the video, I don't know whether you have been able, I could not finish it. It's a very emotional state. I visited the family and I can tell you, I was very impressed with the approach of the, of the family because they told me, MEC, please, there's nothing wrong with the school. I think the individuals must just be brought to book. Don't blame the entire school for what happened. And we are Christians, and we have prayed for what happened to our child. And it was a very emotional situation. Where we are now, we, we, we have left the whole situation to, to the justice system to take its course, but also mm -hmm. our own internal processes to deal with the matter. We are in co uh, contact with the family. We, we have agreed on a process how to handle the situation further. I don't want to elaborate on, on television. And I must say the collaboration and the partnership that we have with the school principal, the, the parents, but also the departmental officials who have been tasked to deal with this matter. I think we are going to get out there and be satisfied with, with the outcome. But I must say, even the boy self is a very strong person. I'm just worried about the long term, the term injuries that is in my face. Because when I interacted with him, him, as much as he assured me that He's fine, he wants to go back to school. I could see the anger in him. Because he, he related to me how he begged these guys to stop. And I, I'm not sure whether I should say it's a, it's a race issue. Because in the video itself, you'll see there's also white people who beg these guys to stop what they are doing. So, 
but also the people who rescued him were white and black mm -hmm. students. So I don't know whether I should class it as a race issue. But for me, it's clear, that's why I'm saying it's, it's a paparic issue. Mm -hmm. This bullying and initiation is out, it's old fashioned. We don't need it in our schools. And it's a, it's a situation that I think we all need to fight. But also we, we urge our parents to work with us because that's why we, we're saying education is a societal issue. It's everyone, it's everybody's business. And we should work with the schools to try and stop this kind of, of things that are happening in our schools because we don't need them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, that's why I'm saying my, my only problem now or challenge is I'm worried about the long term pain that this guy, th this child is going to face. Mm, because, sure but but we are busy actually. with counseling. Yeah. We have also cancelled the, the children at the school, the, the learners. We, the, the child is going through counseling. Also the, the, the parents are going through counseling. But as I'm saying, maybe it's because they are Christians, they, they, they're handling it better than me. Uh, I must say, and, and that is the thing that encouraged me to say, we need to help this family, but also the message needs to go out. If you allow me, the one thing that really disturbed me out of the whole thing is the way our local media reported this thing. To put such a thing on front page, the whole, th the whole incident on, on, I don't know whether it was on Facebook, the whole Social video, media. I don't know what they wanted to, to get out of this. I mean, that's why we are calling on our media. When you report, have a balanced reporting. Because you, you don't just chase for money. You want to sell. And in the meantime, you are insensitive on what message you are sending out to these families. And I think I'm glad that the, the one of our local newspapers, the DFA, apologized. But the damage is done. And when I meet, met a family, they were actually raising it to say, MEC, what is happening with these newspaper people? I, and th those are some of the things I think I, I, I said to myself if this question come up. I want to say it here. It was really very insensitive of them to put that video on, on Facebook and also front page news of this thing. I, and, and I hope that they have learned from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And that point has been made and taken, that incident. Uh, the words just fail me. Despicable, heart-wrenching, yes. devastating indeed. And let me see. Thank you so very much for bringing us up to speed regarding that. Let me speak to you now, MEC Block. Uh, sitting here on stage, you have a lot to contribute. You've updated us on a number of issues, but I can't ignore what is coming to the fore again on social media. Um, some saying that your credibility is in question, uh, even as we speak. Perhaps let's take a quick ad break, and when we return, we try to clarify some of those issues, if we can. Well, let's leave it there, at least for now. Stay right where we are. More on this discussion a little later.